Hey guys, it's me, Cubix, and in this video I'm going to be starting the first part of two parts on how to make a good cubing video. Uh, two disclaimers. First, I'm wearing the hood because my hair is kind of wacky and I don't like it when people judge me on how I look. So I'm doing the judging right now so that you guys won't. And then the second disclaimer actually pertains to this video and it's about my own videos. So I'm going to be making this tutorial on how to make good cubing videos and that sort of implies that my videos are good but in no way am I saying that my videos are good. In fact, you might have seen my videos before and you might actually hate them. Um, but as for this video and this series, that's not going to matter as much because even though my videos may not be the best, there are certain things that I know for sure work and other things that I know don't work. And so the point of this series is to get you started because most likely if you don't like my videos, it's because of the content and how I do things. Um, but that has very little to do with the actual equipment and the setup of your equipment, which is what this tutorial is going to focus on. So this is part one, and in this one I'm just going to be talking about different cameras, tripods, lighting, audio, stuff like that. And then the second part is going to be how to actually use those things that you have, set them up for different types of videos. So as you'll notice, nothing pertains to content because that's something that you have to individualize and something that you have to choose to do. I'm not here to tell you how to make good, entertaining videos. Um, I'm just here to tell you how to make presentable videos. So why don't we first talk about cameras because I'm sure that's what everybody wants to know and there's a few myths that go behind cameras uh, and not even myths but just things that people do that maybe aren't the best things that they could do. Uh, the first thing is using a webcam. Webcams are really convenient, they're everywhere and they usually come with laptops which is what a lot of people use these days and I used to use a webcam but for cubing in particular it doesn't cut it. Um, when I used a webcam, I used it for vlog type videos kind of like this because frankly it didn't matter if the frame rate was good or if the quality was good because they just needed to know the point of the video and by talking I'm not doing anything that's super active or anything like that. So a webcam actually works. For cubing, especially if you're going to be doing solves, a webcam just doesn't cut it for one of two reasons or possibly both. The first is that the quality is not good enough, it's too grainy and especially if you're in a poor lighting situation the video just, you can't tell what's going on, and that's one reason why you shouldn't use a webcam ever uh, for a cubing video. The second reason is because the frame rate's really, really low. Uh, for instance, I have an HD webcam, but when it does HD, it only does 12 frames per second, and that's not good enough for solves. People aren't going to know what you're doing. It's just going to be one big blur, and it's just not good enough. So for those two reasons alone, do not use a webcam ever. Even on the nice MacBooks, MacBook Air, MacBook Pros that have the nice HD webcams, it's still not good enough and there are some exposure issues as well. So in general, just don't use a webcam. Instead, pick up a pocket camcorder. Um, in the past, people like to use those flip uh, cameras. I never used a flip camera because it never did macro and that's one thing that really bothered me. Instead, I used a Kodak PlaySport, which is what I'm using right now. And this camera, you can you can get it for less than $100 on Amazon. If you search around, I think you can get it for something like $50 or $40. Um, especially if it's used, it'll be even cheaper. And not only is this camera HD, it also does 1080p, 60 frames per second, and uh, it's waterproof. And it also does macro, which is really important. Um, if you're someone who does reviews and you like to show mechanisms of things, you need to have macro so that people can see the pieces uh, in detail. So something like this has a couple flaws. One of them is it doesn't have optical zoom. So in order for things to appear bigger, you actually have to move closer or you have to move the camera. Um, that's actually okay uh, for cubing because for the most part, you're not gonna be moving around. Um, you're going to be shooting toward a desk and the desk isn't going to move. So uh, for cubing videos, something like this actually doesn't matter. It's actually fine. Uh, but the other thing that's wrong with this particular camera is the audio quality. Now, right now when you're watching this video, I'm using an external microphone, so it might seem like the audio is okay, but in fact, the audio is awful. It sounds very muffled, and so you might want to invest in an external microphone, which I will talk about later in this video. Now, it's completely possible that you don't want to spend any money on a camera because, I mean, even though this camera is under $100, you could be using that for cubes or other equipment, so I wouldn't necessarily expect everyone to just go out and buy a camera. 
Um, but one thing is that cell phones have gotten really good over the years, um, especially the later 2012 models actually have macro, they have autofocus, and they shoot in 1080p. So if you have a smartphone that can do that, then by all means use a cell phone. You know, there's no reason why you have to go buy a camera if your camera phone does the job just as well. So uh, just be resourceful. It's possible you already have a good camera and you just haven't really thought about it. Another option is actually just a digital camera. Newer digital cameras by say Sony or Canon actually have a video feature and most of them can shoot in at least 720p. 24 frames per second, and then some of them can do 1080p 60 frames per second. Those are great cameras. They typically have decent audio quality. The image quality is superb, and you already have it, so you don't have to spend extra money. So again, be resourceful. If you have a digital camera that shoots video, just use that. I swear the lens on that will be better than your webcam. And even moving further from that, you can actually get a DSLR, which is what I shoot videos on. Of course, this video is on the Kodak PlaySport because I wanted to demonstrate um, a cheaper camera. But the DSLR I have is a Canon T3i. I originally got the camera for photography and it's still used primarily for photography. It just so happens that the video quality is the best of any camera that I have. And so of course I'm going to be using that for my videos because I want to bring the highest quality that I can. But it's not something that I recommend getting because first of all it's overkill for videos in general. Um, and second of all it's really expensive. So unless you're into photography I wouldn't get this for the purpose of video. Uh, it's just a waste of money if you do that. The second thing that's really important is actually lighting, and it's more important than even the tripod. Even though image stability is important, you can get by with some shaky cam if you have good lighting. The lighting that I'm using right now isn't the best because of course I'm using um, sort of this vlog angle, and so there's a yellow light just from my room, and then there's also a white uh, lamp. Those are the two lights that are uh, used in this video, and it doesn't look the best as you might imagine. On my cubing videos, you'll notice the lighting is a lot better, and that's because the primary light is actually the white lamp, and that's to simulate direct sunlight, which is really good for cubing. The reason why lighting is so important for cubing videos versus other types of videos like the one I'm doing right now is because cubes have a lot of colors, and you want those colors to pop out. If you're doing a solve, it doesn't matter as much, um, but when you're doing something like reviews or tutorials, accurate colors are important, and if you have something like a yellow light, which is what most lamps have, then your whites are going to look like yellows and then your fluorescent colors are going to mix and everything becomes really confusing. So you want to invest in a white lamp or something like this. Um, so the white light I have was just laying around in my house. It wasn't being used for anything. So I just took it and it's now the lighting that I use for cubing videos and I think it looks quite good. So aside from lighting, the next thing you want to do is make sure that your videos are, in fact, stable. Again, sometimes people like to strap the cameras to their heads uh, for this sort of like POV view when they do tutorials. Um, that's what Bad Mephisto did in the past. I did that for a couple of videos. Um, but overall, you want to use a tripod because it just makes everything a little bit cleaner, a little bit more professional and polished. And there are a lot of tripods that you can use. Um, the cheapo tripods that are about $30 they're going to be perfect for most cameras that are pretty small. So digital cameras, the camcorder I'm using right now, you can get a tripod for under $20. Um, it'll make your videos a lot better. If you do actually have a DSLR, then hopefully you already have a good tripod. Um, the one that I use with my DSLR is a Ravelli 70-inch tripod. It's like 13 pounds. Um, very heavy duty, and that's just so that the camera doesn't shake because that's annoying uh, when you make a video. Um, so tripods are a good thing, they're very important, so hopefully uh, you guys can get one. And the last thing I'm going to be talking about in this video is audio. Right now I'm using an external microphone, it's a CADU 37 condenser mic that plugs directly into the computer, and something like this is very useful because I don't need an audio interface to do all that stuff. Um, it just records directly, um, I'm using Audacity right now to record the audio, which is free, and free stuff is always good. So by using this microphone, of course, in editing, I have to splice the video and audio together so that it syncs. Um, if I were to just use the audio from the camera, it would sound very, very bad. Audio in general isn't as important as video for cubing videos because a lot of times you are just doing solves and the sound of the cube doesn't matter nearly as much as how fast you solve it. So um, microphones are somewhat optional, but if you're really into YouTube or into making videos, then you're going to want to invest in a microphone of some sort. So this concludes part one of the series. 
this is just a general guide on different equipment that you can use and then in part two I'm going to be talking about setups for different types of videos and hopefully that will be really interesting for you guys um, until then toodles <laughs>